The heavens proclaim God's glory. The earth and all that is in it reflect God's faithfulness and love. The rains nourish the fields and fill the rivers. The music of birdsong fills the air. We behold the glory and wonder of God's creation, and we respond with worship and praise. When we gather in God's presence, we become aware of our sinfulness, our need for a new beginning. And the only thing that can offer that to us is the grace of God. So we draw near to God, confessing our sin, trusting in God's love, which completely forgives. Our pockets are full and our shelves bow beneath the weight of their contents. Still, we forget those who have little and who struggle to live. We confess, O God, that we too easily forget the poor, the destitute, and the neglected. Wrapped up in our own concerns, we have abandoned your commandment to love our neighbor as ourself. Free us to share, O God. Liberate us from all consuming self-interest and see the needs of others. Empower us to change the systems that have kept people in poverty for generations. God's love is from everlasting to everlasting. And God's love completely forgives us, restores us, and sets our feet on a path to new life. 
friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Good morning, church, and welcome back to the sanctuary of First Presbyterian Church in Evansville, Indiana. We're delighted that you have joined us this morning. We are using our new in-house camera, and there'll be another one posted here in the sanctuary very soon, but hopefully you're getting better images and better sound this morning via Facebook. So we are grateful for all of the work that's gone into making this possible for us. I would remind you that on Wednesday at 5.30 Central Time, we will be together here in the sanctuary to have a service of evening prayer. We hope that you will join us then. And on Thursday at noon Central Time, Robert will be here to provide music at the noon hour. So we hope you will join us for those two online events. We are very glad to have all of you with us, even across the distance. And now as we turn to hear the good news of new life, let us pray that God will lead us into understanding. Speak to us once more your good news of new life, O God. Open our eyes to see the wisdom in doing justice and enable us to live the new life that comes with being God's people. Be present, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our lesson this morning is again from Proverbs, where today we're in chapter 29 and we're reading verses 2 through 7. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked rule, the people groan. A child who loves wisdom makes a parent glad, but to keep company with prostitutes is to squander one's substance. By justice, a king gives stability to the land, but one who makes heavy exactions ruins it. Whoever flatters a neighbor is spreading a net for the neighbor's feet. In the transgression of the evil, there is a snare, but the righteous sing and rejoice. The righteous know the rights of the poor. The wicked have no such understanding. Glory to God who gives us the word. May God write that word on our hearts. And may God and God alone receive glory, honor, and praise.
If you have ever parented, or if you are trained as an educator, or if you're simply a keen observer of the world around you, you know that there are certain stages through which children move. They are signs on the journey to adulthood that mark the progress or the lack thereof. And that can be times of celebration, the first steps, or indications that something more may be required. One of the stages that catches adults off guard is when a young child of about three or four says for the first time, that's not fair. It loses some of the charm when the child reaches their teenage years, and you've heard it approximately 177,922 times. Still, it is a marker in a young child's life. There is a sense of right and wrong, the emerging evidence of a conscience, the first glimmer of the more fully human person that child is to become. That sense of right and wrong, of fair and unfair, is the beginning of our lifelong struggle with justice. We are very good at knowing when our own rights and entitlements are being impacted. We sometimes have a bit more of a challenge knowing when the rights and entitlements of others are being impinged. Justice plays a significant role in being a Christian person. Professor Paul Lewis Metzger of the Multnomah Bible Seminary in Portland, Oregon, no bastion of liberal thought, writes, Biblical justice involves making individuals, communities, and the cosmos whole by upholding both goodness and impartiality. It stands at the center of true religion, according to James, who says that the kind of religion that God our Father accepts is pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Earlier scripture says the righteous care about justice for the poor, but the wicked have no such concern. God did not create a broken, divided, and fractured world. God created the world in a complete wholeness, no hint of imperfection or damage. And this is the way God still wants the creation to be, whole and complete, a world in peace, which is to say a world restored. Central to that restoration is the work of justice. The Reverend Dr. Paul Achtmeyer, formerly of the University of Dubuque Theological Seminary, reminds us, from its earliest beginnings, the Presbyterian and Reformed tradition has been deeply involved in ministries of justice. In 16th century, John, Canal John Calvin's Geneva developed programs for public health, employment, and the care of the refugees and indigent persons. John Calvin commenting on Genesis 1, 28, which says God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Calvin said, any inequality which is contrary to this arrangement is nothing else than a corruption of the nature which proceeds from sin. Justice flows from God's heart and character. Justice is what God is all about. And God calls God's people to be people of justice too. Now if we take the biblical language of justice, we begin to see things a little clearer. In the Hebrew scriptures, we find the word chesed. Chesed is an act of loving kindness. A neighbor is sick and you take a meal. You help someone in the store reach something they cannot reach. You feed a stray animal. This is chesed. It is bringing a bit of wholeness to a broken situation. There is another word, tzedakah, which is donating money a portion of what we have received from God to benefit those who have not been so blessed. Giving money to the poor or to a nonprofit that seeks to bring wholeness or supporting the church, that is an act of tzedakah. 
It was Moses Maimonides, the Sephardic Jewish philosopher, who became one of the most prolific and influential Torah scholars of the Middle Ages, who taught us that the greatest act of tzedakah is to enable another person to become independent and self-supporting. The final word to consider is tzedek. Tzedek challenges us to go even further. Tzedek instructs us to change the systems of injustice and inequality that keeps some out, that prevents some from success, that blocks some from the fullness of blessing and wholeness. Loving acts of kindness, financial support, systemic change, these are biblical ideas. How do we bring them to life today? Let's go to a baseball game. When you're the preacher, you can wear whatever team shirt you want. Now suppose we're at a baseball game, and we're trying to watch. Some of us have an easier time of it. So if you happen to be male, white, middle class, educated, and employed, you get to have a pretty good view of the game. The reality is that the situation probably looks more like this. This is the very image of privilege. This is why when others speak of injustice or challenge the way things are or protest in the street, this is why we have a hard time understanding. Now, if we say that everything should be equal and we should all have an equal chance, it looks like this. Because some of us start out with blessings and benefits that others do not enjoy, equality actually keeps things unequal. What we need to be striving toward or at least for a while, is equity. If some need supports and advantages that others do not need, we need to be doing what we can to ensure that everyone can see the game. But what we really need to be trying to figure out is this. This is what God is calling us to do. God is calling us to break down the walls that keep some in and leave others out. God is calling us to undo past wrongs and make a new start that is just and fair for all involved, fair beyond any fairness seen or known thus far. God is calling us to reevaluate the image of God in which all people are created and ensure that all God's children have the fullness of life they were created to enjoy. There was a time when people thought that the church's only purpose was to save souls. The truth of the matter is that was not and is not a very accurate description of what the Bible says Jesus came to do. When Jesus went to his home synagogue in Nazareth and preached Luke tells us that he read from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That's a lot more than interior piety. 
That's a whole lot more than the promise of heaven. That sounds like doing justice, tearing down dividing walls, ensuring that everyone can be all that God created them to be. That sounds like restoring the world to the original state in which it was created. The righteous know the rights of the poor. The wicked have no such understanding. We might put it this way. The righteous care about justice for the poor. Care about fairness for the oppressed. Take action on behalf of the subjugated. Bring hope to the demoralized. This is the work of God's people. Fueled by the love which flows from God's own heart, inspired by God's own example. There is wisdom in doing justice. It is the way of God, a method of living in connection with God. A way of bringing the kingdom of God into the here and now of our world, knowing full well that God will bring that kingdom in its fullness in God's own good and perfect time. Let us take on the holy work of tearing down the dividing walls and breaking through barriers. Let us establish true justice in the land. Let us respect and honor the image of God in our neighbor and let us do what is right and fair and just. It is the wisdom of doing justice for now and evermore. Amen. And now as God's people, let us affirm our faith together with words taken from the Directory for Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA. The disciplines of stewardship and self-offering are a grateful response to God's love for the world and self-giving in Jesus Christ. As Christians, we are called to lives of simplicity, generosity, hospitality, compassion, and care for creation. Tithing is a primary practice of Christian stewardship and self-offering. We are accountable to God for how we use our material goods, spiritual gifts, and time in God's service. At this time of our morning offering, we say again thank you for your continued support of our ministries and missions. If you have gotten a little behind, as is typical during the summer months, we hope that you'll be able to catch up as quickly as possible. We are grateful for your support, and we look forward to continuing the work that God has called us to do together. Now, I hope you're submitting requests for prayer. We'll give you just another minute or two to do that, and then we'll go to God in prayer together.
As we go to God in prayer, please keep in your prayers this week a friend who is in rehab, a father who's going to be receiving a pacemaker this week, the family of Eloise Rickard who passed from pneumatic or pancreatic cancer, for the lives and witness and of John Lewis and C.T. Vivian, for those who are experiencing isolation, and for Chris Tyner on the loss of his mother. Let's go to God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day, for this time of worship across a great distance, for time to hear your word and to celebrate your goodness, to hear your call to new life and to feel your spirit's promptings. We give you thanks for the beauty of the summer, the warm summer days, the produce of the earth, the song of birds, the coolness of a breeze, the comfort of water. We are grateful, O oh God, and we give you thanks and praise. We pray for those who have special needs this week. for a friend in rehabilitation therapy, for a father who will receive a pacemaker, for those experiencing isolation. Be present, O oh God, and bring wholeness, we pray. Give peace. We pray for those who mourn, for the family of Eloise Richard, for Chris Tyner and his family, for the family and friends of John Lewis and the Reverend C.T. Vivian. We are grateful for their lives, their witness, their work and we pray rest for them in the presence of God. We remember before you as well those of our congregation whose transition from this life to the next we mark in these days. The Reverend Joseph Bouts, Kay Chapman, Jeannie Brubeck, Kay Burson, Steve Sampson, Alfred White, Wilson Campbell, Helen Clark, Montice Bibber, Betty Gilliam, We give you thanks for their witness and their work among us. And we pray that we continue to be inspired by their memory. May that memory be for us a blessing. We pray for those who are struggling with COVID-19. We pray for students and teachers and classroom helpers, school bus drivers, parents, all having to make difficult decisions. Give them wisdom and courage to do what they know to be is right. We pray for each other, that we may work together to inhibit the growth of coronavirus in our community. Help us to put away any partisanship that may be involved and help us to see that wearing a mask and keeping distance is a means of loving our neighbor as ourself. We pray for our nation that we may come together as one people instead of the fractured mess in which we find ourselves today. Help us to look out for each other 
to do what is right and fair and just. Help us to put away presumed privilege and help us to see that everything all of us needs is right here, right now. Finally, O oh God, we pray for ourselves. Hear the prayers we offer from the silence of our hearts. These and all of our prayers we offer in the name of Jesus Christ, who still teaches his disciples to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. giving knows no ending from your rich and endless store nature's wonder jesus wisdom crossly cross grave shattered door gifted by you written to you offering up ourselves in praise thankful song shall rise for Gracious donor of our days. Skills and time are hearts for pressing toward the goals of Christ your Son. All at peace in health and freedom, graces joined the church made one. Now direct our daily labor, lest we strive. to answer at your throne. Treasure to you have entrusted, gain through paths your grace conferred. Ours to use for home and kindred, and to spread the gospel word. Open wide our hands and share as we heed Christ's ageless call, healing, teaching, and reclaiming, serving you by loving all. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice, tzedek, to love kindness, chesed, and to walk humbly with your God? Those ancient words have greater truth today perhaps than at any other time in our lives. Let us be people who break down dividing walls. Let us be people who practice acts of kindness, the very minimum for doing justice. And let us always remember that God is with us. And what could be better than that? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.